Welcome everyone to BizHack Live, our weekly series looking at the latest in digital marketing. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy and the host of BizHack Live. And today uh, I'm very excited to welcome uh, Michelle Carroll of One Stop Marketing Solutions to talk about the challenges of work-life balance from the perspective of a female entrepreneur. Now, this might seem like a little far afield from a webinar series that's usually about marketing tips and tactics, uh, but it's not, absolutely not, for a couple of reasons. Number one, more than 70% of the people who participate in BizHack's trainings, free and uh, paid, uh, are women. Marketing uh, and communications has long been a field that has a large number of amazing women professionals and then, of course, with COVID, which inspired the BizHack Live experience, uh, a lot of women have been forced uh, into childcare duties and out uh, of the workforce. In fact, many people say that the last year of COVID has set us back 10 years in terms of equity when it comes to women in the workforce. And so uh, never has this issue been more live of work-life balance than right now. Uh, with uh, marketers and communications professionals and our audience of business owners. So we're very honored and excited to host this topic with Michelle. And I'll do my best as a, a woke man uh, to, uh, to ask you sensitive, thoughtful questions. But this is definitely a session where your contributions are going to be essential, uh, those of you here in the audience. Our audience for today, our partners for today's session include Safima South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, which uh, Michelle has been a board member of, the American Marketing Association, Creation Station, the 10,000 Small Business Program, and CIC, a co-working space with locations around the country. This is uh, part of our season three. We have amazing presentations coming up next week. We're going to be talking about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. The week after that, we're going to be talking about Google Advertising. The weekend after the week after that, Google Analytics for beginners and more advanced. And we're going to also be talking about Fortune 500 tips and tricks that you can use as a small business owner. If you're interested in supporting all of this amazing programming uh, to make sure that we're able to do it now and into the future as a free service, uh, please uh, join and get a season pass. You'll get signed up. For all of the season three webinars, you'll get automatic emails with the recordings. If you're not able to make it, uh, we'd love to have you and please support us in that way. Again, really encourage you to ask questions. You'll see on the bottom of your screen uh, the Q&A area, and that will then put the questions into the chat. Um, please put your questions in there. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to take a minute to introduce Michelle Carroll. So Michelle... Uh, as I mentioned, uh, is a digital marketing uh, superstar. She's been doing it for more than two decades, uh, both for B2B and B2C markets. She's the president and founder of One Stop Marketing Solutions, um, and they offer a full suite of digital marketing services, including SEO, PPC, social media, web dev, and strategic consultant. Um, she worked at consumerreports.org before that, um, definitely one of my favorite websites. And as a media guy, I really appreciate your kind of media background. Consumer Reports is an incredibly important source of information uh, to a lot of us. You also worked at eDiets. I'm on a diet right now. So uh, all of us can connect to that as well. Um, and uh, you've been a volunteer who's worked with Safima as a community organizer of WordCamp. Um, and always made volunteerism and spreading the word about marketing uh, a really important part of what you do. Um, you also work uh, volunteer uh, with your church uh, and as a member of the PTSA of your children's school. Um, it's really wonderful to have you here to talk about work-life balance. Michelle Carroll. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you to um, everyone that's actually joined today. Um, looking at the participants uh, list, I uh, see a lot of familiar uh, names. And of course, I'd rather see your faces, but I'm so thankful for your support. Thank you for joining our session today. Um, 
Okay, so like Dan said, today um, we're going to talk about how to find work-life balance from my perspective as a female entrepreneur, and I want to share with you 10 proven tips that have helped me achieve some balance in the seesaw of motherhood and work. Um, so I know Dan gave a, a great uh, bio and background of me, so I won't take too much time to go through these slides, but I am the founder and CEO of One Stop Marketing Solutions, and we are a full-service digital marketing agency. Um, I founded my business in 2007, so uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to say we're uh, very well established and going on uh, almost 15 years in business. Um, prior to that, I've been a digital marketing veteran, um, and some of the people that are actually on today's webinar have I have worked with um, at uh, E Diets and some of my former employers. Um, but I've always enjoyed working on uh, lead generation and online membership uh, communities and building communities. And, at, and as such, I was a board member of the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association, where we shared a lot of our expertise with other businesses within the community. Um, and I think my most important role is that I'm a wife and mother of two um, amazing children, uh, a preteen and a teenager. And I really, one of my favorite pastimes is uh, spending time with my family and friends and traveling. So I'm going to share with you um, who I am. I'm a CEO, I'm a wife and a mom. And all three, I wear all three of those titles proudly. Um, and so what, why, why did Dan ask me or why, why am I sharing with you why work-life balance is important to me? I wanted to first tell you about my origin story, uh, about the reason why I started my agency, because really, it really does go back to balance. Um, when I was working at Consumer Reports, which was in New York City, which was actually one of my dream jobs to go back to New York City, where I was born and raised in New York, um, and, and have this awesome opportunity to run uh, the whole um, acquisition and uh, um, lead generation for ConsumerReports.org. Uh, unfortunately, my father got very ill at the time, and being an only child to my father, I decided that what was most important to me at the time was my family. And so I decided to take leave um, from my job, and I was very blessed that Consumer Reports actually retained me as a client at the time um, and gave me the opportunity to continue to work from home. And so therefore I've actually had, everyone's, you know, with the pandemic has been working virtual. Ever since I started my agency, I've been working virtually. And I really have done that because to me, the work-life balance was the most important. So not only did I have my first client in Consumer Reports, but through my um, networking with FEMA and with other organizations, I was able to grow my agency. But I always um, have know. been, yes. Yes. We're still not seeing your screen. I don't know if you're sharing. Oh, your yes. presentation yet. Your introduction. Oh, wasn't thank you for. Right yes, there. I am sharing it. Thank you for telling me that. Um, sharing my screen. Thank you. <laughs> Let me take a step back. Okay. So um, I was. Now, do you all see it? Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lilia. Okay, so as I was saying, um, I am telling you the story about my uh, why I started my agency and my guiding force um, has really been uh, keeping true to that mission, which was that I wanted to obtain work-life balance. And I was very fortunate that I was able to um, quickly attain some, some of my clients. Um, but my guiding force, I'll tell you, because working in South Florida and also working with uh, clients in, in New York and throughout the country, um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of different uh, personalities and a lot of people that will um, zap your energy. So my guiding force, as frank as it is, because that's how I am, I'm very frank, has been not to work with assholes. So one of the reasons why I have chosen to work with who I work with is because I really do um, want to make sure that they preserve the energy that I also then give to my family and to um, my friends and to the community that I serve. Um, so I have tried to remain true to that and uh, I've been very fortunate that as I've been growing my uh, agency and taking on more clients, 
sometimes you have to weigh the seesaw of like how many clients is too many clients. And um, I'm going to share some of those stories throughout this. Um, but one of the things that I, I want to uh, tell you is that having the freedom to choose how I spend my time with my family and my friends means the world to me. So what I'm sharing here are some photos um, because to me, not only am I a successful business person, but I want to take time to go. Sometimes I have to turn down work meetings and go because I want to. I want to go on school field trips or I want to help in the classroom. So one of the things I want to share with the women um, on today's webinar is that you can actually achieve that if you, um, with some of these tips. Um, so let's first start with what is work-life balance? Because, um, you know, it's a term that's just often uh, talked about, um, but it, it really is it's uh, described to be the balance between domestic responsibilities and your entrepreneurial role. Um, it was really denoted, uh, coined to denote the unhealthy lifestyle that many entrepreneurs and especially working moms um, are achieving because they're choosing their work over their personal life and thus ignoring a lot of, you know, relevant areas like friends, family, hobbies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone can relate to the fact that women, um, as John, Dan mentioned, take on more of the home responsibilities. And during this pandemic, it certainly has amplified that, being that um, a lot more people have been working from home. So, you know, not only are we the ones that are responsible for, you um, our business and running our business, um, but we're also the ones that are making, um, you know, appointments or doing the laundry or, you know, doing the dishes, making sure that the house is running. A lot of times um, we're just doing that juggling act between our job and all the other re um, important responsibilities. So um, it's really for many women that I talk to, it's a struggle to find the work-life balance, and especially so as a female entrepreneur or even just a working mom. Um, it's, it's not just something that's unique to just entrepreneurs. This is something that um, you know, most working moms are, are faced with. Um, and even though it's true that when you are your own boss, you do have the freedom to choose your own hours or work your own hours. Um, but what happens is, is that oftentimes business owners take on so much work that it just feels like between the work you do at home and the work you do at work, it's a 24 seven grind. So I just, I, I want to, you know, this quote was really relevant because I tried to remind myself of this uh, daily. Um, don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. And this is from Dolly Parton, who's just an amazing female entrepreneur and inspiration to me and many women. Um, so I thought that I should share with you uh, some stats on women entrepreneurs, because as you can see over um, the last 20 years, the number of women that have started their own business in the United States has actually increased by 114%. Um, so while that's actually amazing for women empowerment and for women to feel like they're not just, you know, uh, finally starting to break glass ceilings, because I will tell you, it was not until the 1970s that women actually started um, their own businesses because of the law, you know, the laws that were in place that prohibited that from happening. Um, but currently, there's 12.3 um, 12 million women that own businesses in the United States. So we are talking about relatively um, large number, but at the same time, a very small number in comparison to the fact that we have, what, upwards of 300 million women. Um, and when you look at the breakdown of those women that own businesses, 62% of them are between the ages of 40 to 59, um, and only 30% are actually women younger than 40. Um, I think a lot of that just has to do with, um, you know, getting to a certain point in your career where you have the resources or you have um, the connections that maybe, you know, uh, get you prepared to launch your own business. Although I will say that I think with uh, the current generation, you're seeing um, more women, especially women of color and minority women are starting to start businesses, which is phenomenal. Um, 
myself, uh, I one of the things that I pride myself on is I'm actually a woman certified business. And that's something that I think a lot of women don't know exist. And by becoming, uh, by getting the certification that you're women certified business, it actually opens doors to a lot of other uh, business contracts and government contracts and other opportunities for people for you to work with. Um, and um, having said that, even though all of these are amazing stats to share, the majority of these women are still facing these challenges. So mainly the work-life triangle. And I just thought that this um, graphic really uh, describes it very well because there's the balance of your work your relationship, your self-care, and, you know, what we do, our career, our housework, oftentimes um, takes uh, precedent or a lot of people have difficulty in prioritizing some of the other very important elements like your spiritual well-being, your physical well-being, your emotional um, needs, your health, your wellness, making time for exercise when, you know, you might have to have a business meeting or take your kids to school or things like that. So oftentimes what happens is, is that women are foregoing those um, important self-care activities. And it also then, it has a negative impact on their personal relationships, their friendships, their marriages with spouses. Um, and ultimately it leads to more stress and being burnt out and being frustrated. So... I think this is a very timely topic as we are um, about to hopefully get back to a more normal work uh, um, and what is normal really, but we can define that for ourselves. Um, so the most important tip that I'm gonna share with you today, because I'm gonna share with you 10 different tips that have helped me achieve a work-life balance, um, um, but it's the most important thing to say is that there is no magic formula or no one size fits all approach to finding work life balance. You really have to kind of, you know, test things out to see what works for you because everyone's priorities are different. So um, accepting that there's just no perfect work life balance is the first step to um, getting this. So as I mentioned in, in this um, webinar, I'm just gonna share with you over the past 14 years of running my digital agency, what ways I have created a plan that works for me. In this webinar, different than other webinars that I've done or other presentations, this is me getting very personal and sharing with you personal stories. So um, bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to share with you what's helped me on my daily quest and to be a better mother, a better wife, and a successful business owner. Um, first, steps that, uh, first step is to know your why. Everyone has their own reason for why they started their business and what motivates you to continue working hard for your goals. So, um, and there's a lot of books out there that talk about the process of knowing your why, whether it's knowing your why for um, business, for your, for your business, like to know what types of customers you wanna work with. But this is really more of a self-exploration. Know your own uh, personal mission statement and stay true to that mission statement. I just shared with you some of mine. So for me, it was creating a balanced life where I can share my marketing expertise and help customers. I really enjoy working with uh, startups, small businesses, um, like-minded entrepreneurs. And I know that it's also important for me to have the freedom and the flexibility to create my own schedule and spend time with my family and friends. That's what's most important to me. And throughout the years, I have had to continue to remind myself of that. And as I said, sometimes it means that you're not going to, um, well, if, if that's not what your why is, that's fine. But for me, that's what I had to keep true to because one, uh, you know, during one season of my business where I just wanted to keep growing and growing, um, I got to a point where I had like 25 clients and I was just so overwhelmed. I literally remember I was twitching. My eyes were twitching. I couldn't sleep at night. I had no time. I, even if I went out to lunch with a girlfriend, I couldn't focus on our conversation. I was just, you know, overwhelmed. So I had to take a step back and say, this isn't the life you wanted. Um, and so for me, that's why, that's my why. Um, 
So I think some ways that you can help to uh, know your why um, is to go through uh, this process of defining your passion in life, what makes you happy, what's your purpose. Um, people say, you know, if you follow your passion, um, success will come or happiness will come. What causes are interest of interest to you? What do you believe? What's your belief system? Um, and one thing, one practice I do, and I know this has gotten very trendy and popular with Pinterest and with Instagram, but I create a vision board and I fill it with dreams and inspirations and goals and um you know, I've actually gotten my daughter into this process with me so that um, she can start this as an early, uh, um, you know, teen, pre-teenager and start to understand that we create our destiny. Um, also, every year, I choose a new word of the year to help me guide what I want to manifest. And this year, it's about abundance. So um, last year, it was about happiness. And actually, uh, what I tried to remember with my, you know, morning affirmations was that um, word and what it meant to um, the priorities and the daily activities that I was doing. So just um, stay true to your personal mission statement in all you do. And this helps you with your why. Prioritize your tasks based on that why. Um, and like I said, it might be different for every person. Abundance might not be important to you. <laughs> it might just be, you know, shifting or aligning or kindness or um, love, whatever it is, it's, it's right for you. Um, another important uh, reminder is to adopt healthy habits. So as silly as this sounds, but water is essential. Make a habit to drink your body weight in water daily. And it takes a lot to do that. But I find that when I do that, I'm much more conscious about the other things that I'm putting into my body and also balance because I also sometimes, you know, drink too much coffee or don't always make the right uh, choices. But when I do eat a healthy, balanced diet um, with whole foods, less processed foods, I just feel more productive. I feel like I have more energy to contribute to all of my different activities. And another important thing is to move, to make time for regular exercise, whatever that is for you, whether it's walking or running or um, yoga, um, find some type of an activity to move your body. Because if you incorporate regular exercise, you will see that your body and your mind become stronger and you're also much more productive. Um, and this is this next tip right here, get your Z's. Sleep and rest are so important. Um, this is actually something I struggle with perhaps the most. I have never really had great sleep habits. I have tried throughout the years to try to give my take my own advice and to get to bed earlier. I tend to be a night owl. But when I do sleep, it really does show. Um, you know, you, you just have so much more energy to put out into the world and um, you're less irritable. I don't get headaches. So it's so simple, but it really is true that a healthy lifestyle will actually benefit your overall quality of life. So in, by investing in your health, you're going to see improvements in both your professional and your personal life. And this is also really important, happiness. So I talked about my word of the year last year was happiness. Um, and this is uh, some advice that I feel all working moms need to um, incorporate, which is find something you really enjoy that makes you happy and just do it without guilt. Schedule time to do it, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly or once a month, whatever it is. And so anyone who knows me knows that Rollerblading on the beach is my happy place. So I try to um, make time at least once a week. Sometimes it doesn't happen, um, but I try to go get up early, go rollerblade on the beach. It just gives me this happy, my euphoria, just like the endorphins are flowing. And then I go and I put that out into the world. So um, the other thing that's important is establishing a daily routine. Um, and as a business owner, like I said, it's really easy to work around the clock, especially when you work from home. Um, it's, 
you know, there's there's really no one to stop you from answering emails at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night or waking up and starting a work project. I think um, it's super important to establish a morning routine to help that reduce that stress. Um, like I said, whether it's um, drinking a glass of water in the morning, praying or meditating to start your day, making a to-do list. I am all about to-do list. I live by them. I have multiple to-do lists. I have to-do list for um, my, you know, what I have to do with my kids, what I have to do with, with those clients. Sometimes I break it down into client to-do list so I can tackle all those things and check them off. Um, it's silly, but make your bed every day. Um, to me, I like to also listen to podcasts regularly. Um, and when, when it comes to your daily routine, follow a regular work schedule as much as you can, even if it means you have set work hours and set breaks. Um, one thing I have tried to do through the years is actually create a two hour window when my kids get out of school. And that's part of my regular work schedule. I realize I'm very fortunate that I'm able to do that. I work from home. I have clients that are on the other side of the country. So oftentimes I have uh, client meetings at six o'clock in the evening. Um, but I had those two hours to myself and to my family to do some things that whether it was prep for dinner or, you know, um, help my kids with their homework, whatever. It's most important that we establish boundaries for our work and for our staff and our friends so that you can manage your expectations. I'm gonna get into boundaries a little bit um, later as well to get a little bit more deep into that. I talked about this, but this is so important. One of the other guiding principles for me is making time for self-care because being overworked, and this goes for everyone, whether it's you know women or men, moms, dads, business owners, we oftentimes in this country, we just, we work, 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 work. And then people are just, it leads to burnout. So it's so important to practice regular self-care, um, doing things that bring you joy. It's not selfish. You actually need it. Um, one of the things I started doing over the last few years is actually meditating. Um, I did take this amazing course from another schema board member, um, Michelle, who taught me how to meditate. That was like life changing. Um, I strongly encourage it. Um, if you, you can even just start with some uh, podcast online that teach you how to meditate. You can start with like two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20, whatever works for you. Um, and, you know, I'm going to put this in here because it's very true. Anyone who knows me knows I try to take naps. I take a 20 to 30 minute nap um, whenever I can. Um, I actually learned that advice from another SEMA board member. Um, I won't name her, but she's actually already retired. I found her to be, she's also a successful female entrepreneur. And she shared with me um, that she regularly took naps and it helped her productivity. It helped her moods. And when I started doing it, I don't do it every day, but if I feel like I need to take a quick 20 minute nap, um, I would much rather do that than let's say sit in front of the TV or um, oftentimes just push through it. Um, so I just set a timer. I try to go into a quiet space and I take a nap. Um, and uh, I feel so much more refreshed. And you don't, there is science to napping, so you can look into the, the ideal time. Um, I believe, and I'm no expert here, I just do what works for me, 20, 30 minutes is usually all I have. So, um, but I think if you nap for more than 45 minutes, uh, it puts you into a different sleep cycle. Again, don't quote me on that, but I believe that you should try to keep it to a shorter nap if possible. Unless, of course, it's the weekend, nap away. Um, <laughs> Uh, another thing I do for self-care is read books and listen to podcasts. I love to listen to audiobooks and podcasts. And um, the other thing that's super important is disconnecting. I put my phone down. Oftentimes I leave it in another room. I don't know what's going on. Um, and that just helps you disconnect and be present with your whoever you're with at the moment. Um, I mentioned this before, but making sure to create your own space for exercise, moving throughout the day. Um, give yourself the same care and attention you give to others and watch yourself bloom. Just try to remind yourself to be a little bit more compassionate with yourself. Here's just some tips. Um, they're going to share this with you so uh, you can pick and choose what works for you. The other very important um, 
uh, tip that I have is to outsource tasks and hire help. As a business owner, especially as a um, new entrepreneur, I think that women tend to just think they can do everything themselves. And of course, I know, you know, um, money might be an issue, right? You're you're just uh, struggling to just make ends meet, um, to make sure your business is successful. Um, but oftentimes, I have found through the years that if you actually hire a responsible employee or a contractor to help you with some tasks that you're not actually an expert at, you will actually find a higher ROI or return on the investment on that, outsourcing that task because they can do it quicker, more efficient, and then you can get more work in that area. Um, the same can be said um, for some home tasks. You know, I do not like to clean. I do, but you know, I much prefer to hire a cleaning lady. Again, I, I realize that finances could be um, a factor. Um, maybe there's some trading of services or bartering that you could do for a specific service for for a task that you want to hire someone for, whether it's um, graphic design or you know um, even when it comes to doing tasks. Uh, in your personal life, um, uh, focus on what really matters to you and outsource some of those small tasks, whether it's, you know, driving, uh, having someone help drive your kids. If you can do something on the other end for them, it'll give you time to focus on what you're really good at and your important issues at work and at home. Um, another very important tip is to make your office space a happy place. Create a happier workspace, um, reduce clutter, and make your, your space more functional. Um, I know a lot of us got thrown into creating workspaces um, for our children this year, putting together desks in their room, or oftentimes sharing your own office with family. Hopefully the kids will be going back to their regular school all across the country. That won't be such an issue, but for those who actually have office space, um, doing some simple things like, you know, diffusing oils if you have a closed space that you could do that, lighting a candle, having um, uh, some things where, you know, whether you want to play your Spotify playlist or some music that helps raise your vibration and relaxes you while you're working. Um, accent your office with some family pictures or flowers. Um, and the simplest thing you can do is actually just put post inspiring mantras or sticky notes to keep you um, reminded. Uh, I have right in front of my desk, I have pa five powerful morning affirmations and just these words that I just remind myself. Um, I also have a be happy uh, sign that um, just reminds me to smile and be happy um, as I'm on Zooms or talking to clients. So we talked about boundaries before, but it's important to learn to set boundaries and uh, say no. Um, it's, it, you know, for women, I think that um, we are just so ingrained to, to do everything, you know, take on so much responsibility. Um, but it is, it, there is an art to setting boundaries and we need to learn how to do it. Um, one way to do it is to define your priorities and know your limits. Just know um, what you're comfortable with doing and what you're not comfortable with doing and communicate that um, honestly, directly, clearly, and often, both to your, you know, at home, to your um, spouse or your children, um, and also when possible to your coworkers, your staff, your clients. Um, Pay attention to your needs on a regular basis. You know, like, am I getting grouchy? Do I need um, more time for myself? Do I need to uh, take on uh, higher help? Um, what, you know, whatever your needs are telling you, um, set some boundaries based on your specific needs and acknowledge what you gain by setting those boundaries. So obviously we're all trying to not be stressed out, be more productive, um, uh, you know, um, be more successful at business. Um, so sometimes it's okay to say no without feeling guilty. Um, uh, so this quote here that I have, you know, it says, love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. You get to choose how to use it. 
you teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and won't accept. And I just want to remind us all that our time and energy are precious because that is, I think, um, something that we forget. Uh, it's not infinite. We really uh, shouldn't get into the trap of doing everything on our own. And then this is important, especially as I, for, for, for me and for a lot of us that work in the digital marketing space or in marketing in general, um, and, and just in general, I think all of us with social media and have, have just become so accustomed to uh, being online 24 seven. Don't be afraid to take time off and unplug. You know, um, uh, what happens when your phone's not working, your computer's not working, the TV's not working, whatever we, uh, you know, we old school people, we just unplug it and it comes back to life, right? A digital detox is good for your mind your, and your body to recharge. Um, so schedule that time for regular breaks a few times a week. Um, and I'll just share one other story for me. One thing I had tried to do, I don't necessarily adopt the whole four day work week uh, um, based you know, mentality for everything, but I do try whenever possible to schedule that uh, Fridays. I like Friday mornings to be a, a, a regular break for me. A few times a month, I just take a few, t few hours and I'm offline. That's when I get time to do um, either my rollerblading or just listening to podcasts or just taking, uh, you know, a, a little, if, if I'm going to take a getaway, like a one-day staycation or um, treat myself to the spa or something like that, or schedule a lunch break with your friends or your coworkers without feeling guilty. And it's so important for me to say that without feeling guilty, because again, um, I, I know myself, like I, I have had people, you know, who judge like, oh, you're going rollerblading? Yes. And guess what? When I'm manifesting um, what I want during that time, so many times, I will actually get the call that I was waiting for from a proposal that I sent out, or I will get the inspiration for a marketing campaign that I've been struggling with, or, you know, uh, there, there's many benefits I've, I've achieved by doing that, scheduling time for regular breaks. So it works for me, just saying. Um, be spontaneous as well. Sometimes it's also, while it's good to um, schedule time for regular breaks. Sometimes things will come up and if you can rearrange your schedule a bit, um, just do it. So it's important just to remind us all that life is about balance. You don't always need to be getting stuff done. Sometimes it's perfectly okay and absolutely necessary to shut down, kick back, and do nothing. And this is also important to lean into your support system. Many women find that having a support system of friends and family is helpful. I know for me, it has really been um, a, a source of happiness and joy to schedule regular dates with my girlfriends, to keep my love bucket full, and to give me an outlet to melt away my stress and my frustrations, just talking through with other women, working women. My group of friends happen to be all of them are, uh, you know, in various careers. Everyone's very busy with, you know, active children. Um, we're all juggling. We're doing this daily balance of, you know, uh, being a good wife, a good mother, our career. Um, and it's just helpful. It's, 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 it's really like free therapy. <laughs> if you're blessed enough to have some friends and also, you know, cultivate those friendships, maybe with meetup groups or events. Um, I realized with the pandemic, it's been a little harder to meet people in person. Um, but like I said, I think we are all getting back to normal. Um, so uh, take those opportunities when you can. And as far as business support system goes, ask your business partner or colleague to pitch in when needed. Don't take it all on yourself because that's actually what helps your business grow is to um, empower your team to do their job and to do a better job and continue to grow. And also I'll just add in there that, um, you know, maybe hiring a business coach as a support system to help you um, or, uh, you know, 
attending webinars like this where you're gaining free knowledge. Um, uh, I know that uh, BizHack uh, Webinar Academy has a, a whole series of webinars coming up to um, provide additional marketing um, advice. And so maybe that's a way for you to um, reach out to people who are in the same industry as you um, and can help you uh, as a support system. And I'm going to just end it with this last tip, uh, proven tip, um, which is, it's, it's not a new concept. I think a lot of us know about it, the law of attraction. Um, I really do believe it. I follow it. Um, you know, there's a lot of books out there. I'm not trying to sell any, any books, but you can look up the law of attraction. You can gain a lot of information online about it, the secret, um, or even just um, through, like I said, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, um, uh, if you're interested in this concept a little bit more, I encourage you to read up about it. But essentially, what the law of attraction means for me and how I use this um, in my business and my personal life is that I th first start with your thoughts, what you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. Um, it's important for us to visualize what we really want in life. And um, it kind of goes back to what I said before about um the vision board exercise, um, but also journaling is important. You can do this on a daily basis. Like, what do you want that day? What do you want that week, that month? What are your goals, um, both for your business or, you know, your career goals, your work, your personal? And then don't be afraid to say it. Ask the universe. Write it down. Say it out loud. Um, so I'll give you an example. You know, I, I um, have said, you know, I want three new clients this month, or I want to have uh, family time and, you know, or I want to go on a date night, something simple like that, you know, um, and then take action. You know, sometimes the universe needs us to do a few things, put things into um, play in order for them to deliver. Um, but it's important to trust and believe that you're worthy to receive the gifts that you're asking for. Um, and uh, another important practice that I could throw into like our, your daily habits is to start and end each day with gratitude. Um, there's always something to be grateful for. Um, all of us that have made it through this pandemic, for one, are so blessed that we have our health and that we have our family if they're still around and that, you know, if you're here um, listening to me right now, uh, you have, you're, you're blessed that you, you have work and, um, your family that you're trying to juggle most likely. So start and end each day with gratitude and gratitude will come, uh, good things will come back to you. Um, also increase your vibrations. Um, there's lots of different activities you can do, um, uh, listening to music, podcasts, doing things that bring you joy. Those, um, meditation, for example, those help increase your vibrations. And then just watch the miracle of manifestation start to transform your life. So um, those are the, the proven tips that have worked for me in trying to achieve work-life balance. Um, I, I do want to just say that, um, as I said, it's it's a daily practice and it's always, um, you need to like refine it and see how it's working for you. Um, and uh, you know, the, it, there's never going to be perfect work-life balance. Um, so I just thought that maybe I'd open it up right now to any questions. Dan, are, are there any questions? Yeah, so um, I'd actually love uh, for Lilia, for you to, to start off if you had any questions um, about work-life balance as a female entrepreneur. And then um, we, uh, well, I would like to open it up as kind of a uh, a Q&A with attendees. So if you would like to uh, volunteer yourself, uh, please raise your hand and we'll give you the ability to unmute yourself. Uh, so Lilia, you want to start? Any any reaction to or questions about uh, for, for, for Michelle? Thank you, Michelle, for sharing this, uh, your experiences and what has worked for you and your lifestyle. And one thing that, that I can highlight from this one is do the things that you like without feeling guilty. For example, just like a, a lunch with somebody. A, now, for example, Dan and I are located in Miami, but we have other people in the team who work uh, remotely or who work in other states. A, and, and sometimes we, we need that time with actual people because we're very used to work inside our homes 
uh, I mean, uh, at Best Hack, we have done that before. Uh, but then, like, just, yeah, taking a lunch with somebody, with a partner, with somebody that, that it's going to become your future client, employee, or, you know, like, connecting with people. I think that's very important, at that, and I think that's something that we have uh, lost a little bit with the pandemic, and we now are starting to see and connect with people in person, and I think that's great. But I, I want to ask you, like, I mean, you're a mom you are an entrepreneur, you're a professional, you have all that. Uh, but what, if you can just share with us one thing that if, if, if you want somebody to take something from this presentation today and it's just one thing that they should be focusing on right now, what would that thing will be? I think that if, if I was to summarize and combine everything that I said, a lot of this really, and, and I think a very important topic, uh, especially like you said, with the pandemic and for working moms in general, I'm, I'm not just going to speak to entrepreneurs, um, is our mental health. And in combining all of these tips uh, and really achieving work-life balance, um, uh, I think that we can be more mindful of our, our mental health and how we also um, share the energy that we have, um, whether it's positive energy or, um, you know, a stressed out uh, attitude um, with uh, those that we interact with. So it, it combines to have a more overall healthy lifestyle. Um, and that obviously helps with our mental health. And then that also helps with being more successful in your business life, in your work life, I'm sorry, in your personal life, um, in your uh, relationship with your children, with your spouse, with your friends. So it really spills over. Um, and so I think if, if, if I was to say one reason why I think work-life balance and trying to adopt these different tips is important is because we all need, need to be mindful of our, our mental health. Uh, great, uh, great uh, question, Lilia, in response, Michelle. So um, we have uh, Carol Heller, uh, who's a, a friend of BizHack, has been part of our program, was one of the uh, graduation presenters and uh, is an, also an experienced marketer as well. And uh, Michelle, do you know Carol? I do, yes, from SEMA. Uh, I, I do. Exactly. Great. Uh, well, Carol, um, uh, please, we'd love to hear your, th your question. Just, uh, you can unmute yourself now. Oh, thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. My, my question, Michelle, is what's been the reaction from um, co-workers or clients when you say, look, I, I'm not available, I'm, I'm, I'm off to do a field trip with my, with my kids or, or, or such? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I need to tell people why I'm off. I just say I'm unavailable. And um, if I happen to be um, close with that client in that type of rapport, I mean, I do have a client that I've been with, that I mean, that I've worked with since 2009, who happens to be you know, a friend. And also I knew I was, I knew them before. So I might share those details with that friend or the, with that client. Um, but in terms of coworkers, um, I'm, I'm transparent with my coworkers because, you know, um, I want them to know where I'm at, but I don't feel like I need to ask anyone's permission, nor do I need to um, answer for what, what I'm doing with my time. Because as long as I'm productive and getting the job done, and also um, as a business owner, as you know, I find myself responsible for um, my team and for employing people. So if I'm not productive, um, and, and like I said, for me, this is very important to me being productive because it's my mental health and my work-life balance that are going to keep me um, energized to get, to keep working. Like, otherwise, like, I, I don't know if I would have the wherewithal to keep doing this. So to me, I think the most important thing is, is I don't feel like I need to answer to anyone. And that's what I meant about like, don't feel guilty. But at the same time, you don't owe anyone any answer, excuses. 
like, you know, you can just block two hours out of your day. And as long as you get the work done for that client or for that, again, you know, I make my own hours. So I, I'm clear in that not everyone has that flexibility. But um, being that I do, I don't feel like I need to answer where I'm at. Perfect. Yeah. So you block your calendar. You just have a meeting or whatever. Just perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And nice to speak with you again, Carol. Yes. So one question I had is, do you think your advice is, is different or has changed due to COVID? In other words, what, what about COVID has changed the, your perspective and your advice to female entrepreneurs? Um, oh, that's a great question. Yes, I do think that my advice is probably um, COVID does have an impact. I think mostly because of the fact that I have 14 plus years of working um, virtually. Um, as I said, my home based business has been how I have been operating my business since day one. Um, so I think I have I mean, you know, I'm an expert in this. <laughs> I have a lot of years of experience of how to achieve work-life balance. I, I think simply because of the fact that my workplace has always been at home, you know, and I've chosen that because I'll tell you, I mean, throughout the, the development of my um, agency um, and with my um, relationships with other, for example, other FEMA board members, I have had a few opportunities to take workspace in co-working spaces um, and also like other larger agencies that maybe wanted me to, you know, get a smaller office within their space. And I, I had to take that um, back to my, you know, evaluate that decision. Um, and so to me, it wasn't staying true to my mission statement and what I wanted. Um, so having said that, I think that this advice is more relevant than ever to women who may have during this pandemic decided to start businesses on their own, or who may have chosen um, because of having to be forced to work from home for their for their job, whether it's you know working for another employer, um, that they may have chosen that this is what they want to continue doing, and that's perfectly okay. Um, so I just want to, and I think it's happening uh, like organically and naturally. I want to remove the stigma that working from home is like you're just like like just working from home. I don't know, like, it's like negative, like, no, I'm doing the same work. And I'm still just as successful as some other agencies that might have office space. <laughs> yeah, no, and I definitely think uh, COVID did help with that. I uh, wanted to invite Rochelle Jones. Uh, you, you, we'll give you the last question. Thanks, Rochelle. Oh, thank you. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Rochelle. <laughs> long time, Great, my friend. Long time. Yes, Rochelle and I used to work together at EDI. It's one of my favorites. Hello. <laughs> So I'm not a working mother, but I wanted to support you today. Thank you so much for being on this. I appreciate it. Let's connect after this. Please, yeah. please, let's do. But I wanted to let you know, I've worked from home these last couple of years. So these tips were very helpful. So I, I'm thinking that this could broaden your scope because the pandemic and working from home and losing ourselves and just, you know, we're waking up, we're working, we're going to sleep and just having the same routine day in, day out. So the tips that I know that's two or three that I'm going to put into place immediately. So I appreciate, you know, your, your group putting this on today for sure. Thank you so much, Rochelle. I appreciate the feedback and you taking the time. And I will just say that at least in my experience, you were like a working mom to all of us at E-Diet. <laughs> Especially she, she managed the whole customer service uh, division and had a lot of, uh, you know, people that looked up to her as, uh, as a leader. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I don't know if there's any other questions. Uh, we don't have any other questions now. Um, I did want to um, thank you guys for, um, let me see here. I'm having a little trouble. Sorry about that. Um, I, I did want to thank you, uh, Michelle, uh, for taking the time to, um, you know, share this really important information with us. We've been um, all um, struggling, frankly, you know, I, me as a dad, uh, too, with uh, the work-life balance and how to how to be an effective father and husband. And a lot of your advice, frankly, is um, totally relevant to to the guys out there as well. So thank you. Thank you.
thank you again for this opportunity. Absolutely. And um, I wanted to just share with you guys, um, you know, BizHack's signature approach to digital marketing training for all those female entrepreneurs that we work with is called the lead building system. Uh, with the foundation of your business story. And you saw Michelle talking about her personal why and why she does what she does and what motivates her. And then the six pillars and the nine steps, which are actually about how to run successful marketing campaigns to generate leads and attract new customers. And we have a seven week program coming up where we teach you the system and walk you through the nine steps. Uh, it starts on July 12th. If you go to bizhack.com, you can apply. We'd love to have you. We have an amazing lineup of speakers coming up next week. We're going to be talking with Brett Spodak of Productive Power about LinkedIn Sales Navigator and how to use that for lead generation. In two weeks, we have Jeff Cooper talking about paid search on Google and how to use that to acquire new customers. We're going to talk uh, analytics in three weeks with uh, Ben Holland. Uh, the VP of Marketing of Q Financial. And then we have the amazing uh, female entrepreneur, Jessica Velletri Akinwell, uh, talking about marketing techniques from Fortune 500 companies that any small business can use. Uh, thanks to all of you for being our season pass holders. We'd love to have more of you join. And with that, thank you so much for being great supporters of BizHack, BizHack Academy, BizHack Live, and all the amazing female entrepreneurs that have been part of our, our network. Thank you, everybody.